A couple weeks ago, we got a call about an old steam boiler leaking in our client's basement. It sprayed this boiling steam and gross rusty water all over the couch, the floor, and just everything in its path. We turned the water off, patched the damaged pipe, and had their heat running again within the hour. While the pipe was fixed for now, there were telltale signs of a bigger underlying issue with the boiler. But to understand that, we first have to understand how exactly a steam system works. This is a Utica steam boiler system, explained. So this is the boiler, the blue cube. That's what heats tap water to make steam. When you turn on your thermostat, the boiler burns natural gas to heat an internal tank of water. That water, once boiling, bubbles up violently through these thick steel pipes, and the steam rises up into a different network of pipes that go throughout the house. Steam flows through radiators like this one, where it transfers heat into the radiator and then into the surrounding air. After giving away all that heat energy, the steam condenses into water and it flows down this condensate line to go back into the boiler. So that's how a steam system works, or at least that's how it's supposed to be working. But the client's steam pipes are full of water, which is a huge red flag, so clearly that process is being interrupted somewhere. We did a couple tests with an infrared camera and realized the boiler is backflowing and filling the steam pipes with water. Since the Utica was getting old and most of the steam pipes were already shot, the client chose to have us cut out the entire steam system and replace it with a better, high efficiency system in a different part of the basement. Now that the steam boiler is gone, we can turn our attention to the new high efficiency boiler. The walls down here are concrete, so we frame out a length of plywood to hang everything on. With the boiler up on the wall, we can start piping out the rest of the system. This consists of copper pipes, valves, and a couple pumps to direct the flow of hot water throughout the house. The pipes are cut to length and joined together with an O-ring rubber seal and a Milwaukee Pro Press. These green blocks are the zone pumps, which divert hot water from the boiler and send it up to the forced hot water baseboards. There are two thermostats and two heating zones on this system, one for each floor. Now that most of the boiler is in place, we can start on the system venting. Two holes are drilled in the exterior wall for the air intake and system exhaust. The white PVC is the air intake for combustion, while the gray one, which is made of CPVC, is for combustion exhaust. The pipes being run across the basement here are part of this heating loop network. Now that the new boiler is complete, it's time to go upstairs and start putting in the forced hot water baseboards. For this project, we'll be using slant fin baseboard heaters which are essentially two parts. First, there's the heating element, and then there's the protective cover. The heating element is basically just a copper pipe covered in small aluminum fins. The fins conduct heat out of the hot water in the pipe, while the outside covers prevent anything from touching the heating element. Hot water passes through the baseboards on its floor 
before returning to the boiler to be heated again. With the baseboards in place around the perimeter of the house, we flush the boiler, get it running, and we're ready to move on to the next person in need. Heat faster, live better. Adario Services.